Okay, members, um, we now move to the next item of business. That's item four in the order paper, which is the adjournment. The question is that the Assembly do now adjourn, and in conjunction, conjunction with the Business Committee, I have given leave to Ms Emma Rogan to raise the matter of recurring flooding in the Newcastle area. The proposer of the topic will have 15 minutes, and um, just so that people realise about the timing of it, total allocated time to this is one hour, and the Minister will have 10 minutes to respond, so for people wanting to slot in around that there and, and uh, cover their colleagues, it will probably be in around about four or five minutes, but uh, we'll try and keep it managed as, as well as we can. So I now call Ms Emma Rogan. Thank you. On Tuesday, the 25th of August, at approximately 9:15 a.m., the Shimna River again burst its banks and flowed through the streets, gardens, and into homes. This is not the first time this has happened in this area. The same devastation occurred in 2008, almost to the day when homes, gardens, and streets were flooded, and havoc for local residents was created. I can personally think of nothing worse. The impact on the residents of Newcastle has been immeasurable. Residents left to deal with their homes and the contents ruined in a matter of minutes. The longer term implications will be far reaching and much longer, displaced and homeless for months ahead. What has resonated with me is the unseen damage to their homes, the sheer destruction that was caused to anything that got in the way of the raging floodwaters. On that Tuesday morning, I stood alongside my Sinn Féin colleagues, unable to comprehend the scale of the disaster that was unfolding before my eyes. There was a need for quick thinking, reactions to help people help prevent any more flooding to homes, the need to help those already flooded. There was a realisation that accommodation was going to be needed for those that couldn't return to their homes. The scene that greeted us was like something from an action film. The water was up over the windscreen of cars which were completely submerged. The emergency services and the specialised teams arrived on the scene to rescue those in danger and make the area as safe as possible. Agencies were on the ground working together to provide sandbags and pump out what they could to limit damages, the damage to homes. People were in, an, in a high state of anxiety, fearful for another deluge of water. You could see the water clearly flowing down the mountain at great pace. Residents had to leave their homes, waterlogged with little time but to pack a small bag of essentials. The key workers from DFI roads and DFI rivers worked tirelessly on the ground and this is to be commended greatly. However, some might say that this flooding could, could have been better prepared for. Forward planning might just have been the key to avoiding situations like the one we witnessed in Newcastle. Could sandbags have been delivered before the onset of the storm? Could the Shimna and the Burn Rivers have been surveyed for any potential flooding issues, falling to trees, debris? Could greater measures have been put in place to alleviate the potential threat of this flooding? Especially now that we are facing a climate emergency, it is essential that the Department of Infrastructure puts the necessary protection in place to protect communities like Newcastle from reoccurring flooding disasters. The flood alleviation plan needs to be carried out now. It cannot wait until next summer, as residents are living in fear of what this winter will bring. Measures need to be put in place now to remedy some of the flooding issues. For example, the Bourne River flood defence wall, it created a dam effect. The water couldn't get, a get away. Gardens, sheds, summer houses, garages, all flooded. The water has double valves to let the water, the wall has double valves to let the water into the river. They are too low. When the water is high, it can't get back into the river. They need raised. This could be done now. The culvert under the Shimna Road, it's collapsed. The water backs up and has nowhere to go. It needs fixed now. The sewer system in Newcastle mixes river and sewage in the same system. This needs fixed now. Homeowners, businesses and schools are living in fear for the next storm or the next high tide or the next flooding incident. They, need, they find getting home insurance almost impossible. I witnessed the aftermath on the, day, on the ground in the days after. Contents of homes being taken away in skips, lying in front gardens, homes being fumigated, children's toys going into bin bags. Everything was contaminated. People's lives turned upside down. Minister, your department received the most money after the Department of Health throughout this pandemic. 
The people of Newcastle need a robust measure put in place now. Another disaster like this should not happen again. People are wondering why it will take until summer for these flood alleviation schemes to be put in place. And so will the Minister provide clarity on this issue and elaborate on how the Department is looking at ways to accelerate this process and as a matter of urgency? Thank you very much. Mr Deputy Speaker, I, I rise to uh, support the sentiments already expressed. I, like many other MLAs, was in Newcastle following the flooding and witnessed for myself the dreadful damage that had, been, uh, had occurred. It reminded me of the situation in 2008 when sim similar devastation occurred. And at that time, there were calls for remedial action to be taken immediately. Uh, the Minister, I applaud her for coming down to Newcastle. That was appreciated by all of the local residents. So thank you uh, for that uh, and to hear at first hand uh, what was going on in, in terms of the amount of damage and suffering that was inflicted upon the residents of particularly Shimna Road and Bransford Road. And I'm sure the same points will be made time and time again by the members for Southdown and others as to why this uh, happened. So therefore, I'm going to go to slight, two slightly different tacks. First of all, I'd like the Minister to address an allegation that was made that there were systems in place to prevent a reoccurrence of the 2008 situation, that there were various controls which were operated from a central control room, which would have diverted water away from the Bransford Chimney Road area uh, into uh, the Burn River. And that, that system, which I believe is somewhere up in the vicinity of Tullymore Forest Park, was not operational. Now, that was the allegation made to me by several individuals on the day. I have no idea whether it's true or otherwise, but it would be very useful uh, in this debate to deal with that. Secondly, as already has been alluded to, there are residents in the area who have made insurance claims. And indeed, the assessors have been out and the damage has been uh, totted up and uh, claims are already beginning to be paid. Indeed, I'd applaud the action of Newry Moore and Down Council who have been out and have already authorised the payment of the £1,000 to each person that has been affected by the flood. The speed with which they moved and the very flexible approach that they showed to the residents, I think, is to be applauded. But the bulk of the damage will have to be covered by insurance. And there's a system in place called Flood Re. And Flood Re is a system where there's a £180 million fund set up by all the major insurance companies in the United Kingdom. And I have two questions uh, for the Minister. When I looked up the conditions for Flood Re, first of all, it said that the, the dwelling had to be domestic, which is fine. Secondly, it had to be on, within mainland UK. I'm always worried with that phrase, mainland UK. Does it include Northern Ireland or does it not? Because obviously, maybe it's the Hebrides or Orkneys or Isle of Man or whatever it's aimed at. So I just would like clarification that it does indeed yeah, include UK. But the, the one condition I found the most difficult to understand is that it precludes a claim coming in under the flood risk scheme for any house built after 2009. Now, I can't understand the logic of that exclusion because a house built after 2009 is as more or less likely to flood as a house built before 2009. And I'm dealing with a case at the moment where the house was built in 2013, and it would look on the face of it that the flood risk scheme, which would have been a, a, a godsend to this particular family, that it does not apply in this situation. And what I'd like to know, and I'm trying to get an answer from the Association of British Insurers, is why is that a very, very unusual stipulation? Because there are houses which have been rebuilt uh, since 2010 in situ. And why should they be left out of that scheme while others are not? It, I also would like to hear from the Minister what she intends to do through the Rivers Agency to ensure we don't get a repeat of that. Some people believe in climate change, some people don't. Well, I do. And I believe climate change is man-made, and I believe it's having a profound influence upon uh, the weather systems in our country. People talk about global warming. It's not so much about global warming, it's erratic weather, extreme weather conditions. And Newcastle has had three one in 100 year floods in 22 years. So that's a clear indication of where we're going. So these situations will continue to arise. And therefore, 
I think we're all waiting with bated breath to hear the minister what she's going to say as to how she believes that this awful situation can be prevented in the future. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I call Colin McGrath. Iram, Sir Colin McGrath. Thank you very much, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I welcome the opportunity to have this debate today. A number of questions were posed to the Infrastructure Minister over the last number of weeks, and there were a number of questions posed yesterday. So I welcome the fact that today we'll get another opportunity to be able to get those answers uh, and reconfirmation that the flood alleviation scheme uh, will be delivered uh, in Newcastle. I was present on the day. Uh, in Newcastle on Tuesday, the 25th of August, and I witnessed at first hand the devastation that the flood caused. It was horrendous. Uh, it was heartbreaking to witness cars abandoned, furniture floating in people's living rooms, people and pets being rescued by our heroic emergency services. People were in real danger. Uh, and it was difficult for me to watch, uh, but unbelievably more so for the residents to have to experience that. After all, cars and furniture and possessions can be replaced, um, but fear of injury, that trauma, and even the fear for one's life, uh, those sorts of thoughts don't go away easily. And there were real heroes on that day in Newcastle. Uh, not just our fire and rescue services who were there from Newcastle, Belfast and Armagh, there was ambulance staff and police service, but also the Search and Rescue Dog Association, um, Ireland North, our Coast Guard team from Newcastle and Kilkeel. There were teachers from local schools. There were local businesses that were going the extra mile to help. Individuals and families that were just offering help and support. Truly, Newcastle had a vast army of true heroes in its midst on that day, and it was great to see that. There is no doubt, though, that the flood alleviation scheme has taken too long to deliver, so it must now be delivered. People knew that the flood was on the cards. Just six days before the flood, I was sitting in a constituent's house talking about the scheme and the delays, and we discussed how the next flood uh, could be very soon, uh, as it had been 12 years from the last one. Little did we know that it was going to be just six days later. Now, Newcastle has a complicated topography. There's mountains with watercourse and high ground to one side and the sea on the other. And when you couple heavy rain with high tides, the ingredients are there uh, for a flood. And the question is always there, if not when, uh, or will there be a flood, but when will it be? Uh, and that can be quite frightening for people. But no one could have foreseen the amount of rainfall that did fall uh, when the tide came in and the water levels rose. And we had all the ingredients of that perfect storm. Now, some will say, why weren't all the necessary precautions in place? It's harsh, but on that night, the weather warning was for the whole eastern half of the north. So no one knew exactly where it was going to strike and when it would strike. But when it did, it was at a frightening pace. People told me it took just 30 minutes for their living rooms to fill with water, for their entire downstairs to be flooded. So people are right to be asking questions. They don't want to see some cheap point scoring taking place. You know, they want to see uh, that the flood had taken place and they want the resolution and they want to know when that resolution is going to take place. Um, there have been delays in the scheme. Uh, not least the fact that we didn't have this place for three years. As I understand, there will be some ministerial oversight that is going to take to hurry this scheme up. So the fact that we didn't have a Minister for Infrastructure for three years means that it was very difficult for decisions to be taken to deliver that scheme in the ground. People were asking and asking and asking for the scheme. They looked up the hill to Stormont, but it wasn't here for three years. And that made it very, very difficult to give delivery on the ground. And I want to say that the residents want to see that action, and thankfully that action is what they got on the day from Minister Mallon. Uh, the Minister, I'm very grateful and thankful to you for coming down on the day, for going around and meeting the people, for looking them square in the eyes and seeing the pain and the suffering that they had in that day, to look into their houses and actually see the devastation that was caused. And I know that you took the resolute action on that day that you were going to deliver for the people of Newcastle. And I know in conversations with you since that that's what you've gone back to the department to do. And I hope that as part of this debate, we'll be able to update people on the action that's going to take place. 
They definitely, the residents need to hear that assurance. Uh, and as I say, thank you for coming down on the day to give us that information. To conclude, Mr Speaker, I welcome the opportunity to seek and get the assurance about the delivery of the scheme. I welcome that people will now know that the end in this matter is close at hand. I want to see the scheme commencing as soon as possible and know that once it's completed that nearly £6 million of investment in Newcastle will be welcome and will provide the protections that are needed. I hope we don't see a repeat of such flooding between now and the completion of the scheme and hope that there will be no delays in the delivery. As ministers, MLAs, departments and here in Stormont, we must be all on the side of the residents and delivering for them is crucial. So let's get this scheme delivered. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Um, I too rise and thank the member for bringing this to the chamber today because it is quite timely. Whilst the flood has arrived and thankfully moved away, the aftermath is quite raw and the, and the residents are rightly now living with the concerns Having followed and spoken with residents in the area, it was quite alarming to see the volume of water that could arrive in one area in such a short period of time. And it was devastating to watch homes being absolutely ruined. And there is no other word I could use to describe what happened that day. What also did quickly happen, and I must thank her, was the arrival of the minister. In a moment of chaos and the confusion that follows it, it is reassuring when you see somebody with ministerial portfolio, portfolio to arrive on the scene and let those residents know that we're with you and we understand fully what's happening. So on behalf of the residents and certainly as a representative from South Down, I want to put on record my thanks to the minister. There were plenty of people stepped up as is very often the case in Northern Ireland. It's in a moment of crisis we see the heroes rise. And that is true. And my uh, constituency member from South John, um, Colin McGrath, has referred to it. It was reassuring to see community spirit, even in the midst of a, pandem a pandemic, as active as ever. Local businesses taking in residents, offering a much needed cup of tea and a reassuring ear from a neighbour or friend in that critical moment. There were teachers, there were individuals, there were people everywhere doing everything they could. And it was everything that is good about Newcastle and Northern Ireland. I have to say, Newcastle and that particular area, it is ordinarily an absolute privilege of a place to live in. But on this particular day and at this moment in time, it was chaos. Residents are rightly now left with trying to deal with the insurance and how they can resolve the matter. And that is in the immediacy. And I take on point um, the comments made by Mr Wells about the insurance company. That is a very valid question for investigation. I really can't understand the 2009 uh, stipulation. It makes absolutely no sense. And it only adds to the concern and worry for those houses. Um, does, that, does that year move with time? Do as houses become older, more and more people fall into that category? There's no logic to it. And I think it's important that we understand further how that ever came about and certainly work with the Association of British Insurers and others to find out that that's not the case. But going forward, Residents will, and members in this House will assist them get through this chaos. But then they're confronted with the reality of how easy will it be to get insurance until this flood alleviation scheme is in place. So the clock is ticking, and I do appreciate the Minister's commitment to this. And it is really difficult to say to somebody that we live in hope that there is no other flood before the alleviation scheme is in place. So I really, while I thank the Minister, I really do urge her to do everything in her power to bring forward this scheme as early as possible because people are depending on it and people won't rest easy in their bed at night until they know it's in place. Thank you, Mr Speaker.
I now call uh, Roy Beggs. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Uh, I welcome the opportunity as the Ulster Union spokesperson to, to comment on this important debate. Uh, flooding uh, of homes is devastating on the individuals affected. Many priceless possessions are destroyed, their lives are turned upside down, they may not get back into their houses for months, perhaps even a year in some instances. It takes a lot of time to put, put right the wrong. Frequently, raw sewage is in the mix as well, and that's what causes much of the damage. So it's important that we do all that we can to prevent this happening. My colleague Dermot Nesbitt in 2002 uh, commented on the relative new principle of climate change at that stage, and I'm sure he had County Down in mind, uh, being a representative of, of South Down. And he highlighted the issue of higher levels of rainfall, uh, the potential of uh, uh, increased flooding, and this would particularly affect the coastal communities. Uh, my colleague Harold McKee, who was a councillor for the area, was working on a site in the area. And what he has advised me is that sandbags would not have solved any problems there. Uh, it was a wall of water that came, some five foot of water hit the site where he was. Uh, so a few sandbags wouldn't do anything. What, what is needed is long term changes, long term investment. Uh, perhaps ma managing some of the water upstream, as is we've, we find in other places, has, has benefited, uh, compensating uh, farmers involved, etc. But also looking to see about bringing about structural improvements into the area that are, have flooded. And I understand the Simpna River actually flooded in 2008, uh, and there's also the issue of the Burn River, where there has been flood alleviation scheme uh, carried out. So there has been a significant bit of time, and it could, as, as others have said, been reasonably well predicted that this could happen again. The 100-year storms are happening very, very frequently. They're happening every 10 or 20 years, uh, if not more often. So it's important that as a community, as an assembly, as an executive, that we try to manage this process uh, as much as possible. And it's not good enough just to blame uh, civil servants who are there in the day to provide sandbags. Long term change needs to happen, and uh, the Assembly, the Executive, needs to get involved in that as well. Now, until recently, the Rivers Agency was part of the Department of Agriculture. And the interesting thing about that is, whilst the criticism has been coming about uh, towards uh, or, or administrators, the Minister for the Department of Agriculture from 2011. 2015 of them, right, was Michelle O'Neill. What happened during that period since 2008 when we had the flooding? Subsequently, in 2016, we had Chris Hazard. And then the whole executive was disrupted, disrupted and a further two years passed. So it's important not just to shove the blame onto someone who ha happens to occupy the seat at this particular time. There is a responsibility of everybody concerned to recognise the failings that happened and to put them right. So I hope that we can work together constructively. Uh, there may well be uh, a need for intensive uh, discussions uh, with, with landowners to bring that to conclusions. And I hope that they and the department will act reasonably uh, and accommodate reasonable solutions to enable this important work to happen. But we have to be realistic. This will be very expensive, it will be very disruptive to the environment, but are we going to protect people's houses? I think it's vital that we do. But in Newcastle, it will be a major construction work that will be required. Uh, the risk of, uh, as I've said earlier, uh, uh, high tides, as others have said, and also the geography of the area with the uh, unpredictability of intensive rainfall, the extent of the catchment of the Simna River means, and again the geography, the height that the water falls from, means that there is considerable risk of large scale uh, movements of water and it will take considerable investment and much planning to give protection, the badly needed protection, to the people of Newcastle. And I hope that that will happen as soon as is possible. Thank you. And I call Mr Andrew Muir. 
Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and thank you for the member for bringing this important issue to the Assembly today. I speak today as the uh, Alliance Party spokesperson on infrastructure. Um, I was in Newcastle uh, visiting my grandparents when the floods of 2008 struck. I will never forget the scenes of that day. On our return home, we were very lucky not to get stranded. I remember the amazing generosity of the local people going out of their way to clear water that could easily have sat back and not offered assistance. It was terrible scenes, and as Roy Beck has outlined, very often that flood water also contains sewage, and the impact upon properties is for the long term uh, in terms of the cleanup. And I can remember the, in the aftermath there was talk of a once in a generation event and that a forthcoming flood alleviation scheme was be, uh, rolled out to ensure that locals would never again have to suffer that flooding. It is incredibly worrying, but sadly perhaps not surprising, that once in a generation in Newcastle has sadly turned into a much more regular of an event. The impact of climate change means that extreme weather events are becoming increasingly frequent in Northern Ireland and across the globe. Climate change is the greatest challenge of our times. And this Assembly recognised that fact in declaring a climate emergency earlier this year. The scenes in Newcastle on the 26th of August of this year and in other areas in Northern Ireland were frightening. I join with colleagues across this Assembly in commending the amazing work of our emergency services and local volunteers. In rescuing dozens of people and animals from their homes and cars, they prevented an awful situation getting much worse. They are an absolute credit to our community. The sheer serious shortcomings in the local flood defence systems were clear from the events of 2008, and Storm Francis brutally exposed them once again. I, like um, other members of this Assembly, want to see the flood alleviation scheme in Newcastle brought forward as early as possible. In the meantime, we need to hear from the ministers whether uh, all the actions that can be taken in the short term to alleviate the threat of flooding have been taken. Locals have reported water from overflowing River Shimna travelling over the bridge across the Burn River, when a simple drainage mechanism on the bridge may have provided some relief. We also need to know whether DFI and DERA are actively working together so that upstream land management in the area has been fully investigated as a way of alleviating further flooding. Furthermore, we need uh, to ensure that, as well as preparing for recurring flooding in the future, the devastating effects of last month's floods have been fully addressed. Local paths and footbridges that were badly damaged need to be repaired. Local people in the area will need help and support on their homes and contents insurance claims, many of uh, whom have businesses that have already been pushed to the brink uh, as a result of the pandemic. I have even heard reports of local people who do not want to make a claim now on their insurance for fear that they will not be able to rely on that insurance claim in the event of future uh, and, if not worse, flooding in the future. I want to end by, end by making two general points with regards to flooding in Newcastle and across Northern Ireland. The lack of an assembly for three years prior to ne New Decade New Approach meant that MLAs could not hold a minister for account for the inaction on the flood alleviation scheme. That is shameful. It is more evidence as why do we need these institutions and the Infrastructure Committee uh, to hold the Minister and the Department to account for bringing forward the scheme. Finally, the infrastructure budget in Northern Ireland has been consistently cut over the past decade, and in spite of a small increase this year in terms of day-to-day -day running, it remains that well below what needs to be done, uh, needs to, well below what was in 2010, and far below what is required to address Northern Ireland's infrastructure backlog. Many of the issues that fall under infrastructure, such as flooding, Northern Ireland water and roads do not regularly command the attention of the media or politicians. But as we have seen, if our infrastructure in these areas are not properly funded and actioned, it is local people who bear the costs. That is not a situation we should accept. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. Thank you. Agus Nesh Yerim Sarenaira, Infrastructure, Nicola Mallon, Hon Fragaha. Just now call the Minister for Infrastructure, Nicola Mallon, to respond. Thank you, um, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I want to thank Ms. Rogan for bringing um, this debate to the floor of the House. Um, and I have listened with interest to the comments and the issues raised by members. A, a number of members addressed uh, similar type issues, so I will generally address them, and then I will drill down into some of the very specific questions and concerns that members have. 
Um, since I have been appointed um, Minister for Infrastructure um, nine months ago, I have made it clear that my focus is on doing what I can to improve the lives of people here. An important part of that focus is the flood risk management activities of my department. These activities are aimed at reducing the potential adverse consequences of significant floods on human health, economic activity and the environment. Without continued investment in infrastructure, as Mr Moore has pointed out, and in the face of the climate emergency that Mr Beggs and other members refer to, many of the services we provide will continue to be under extreme strain. For example, approximately 45,000 properties here, which is the equivalent to 5.2 per cent of all properties, are currently identified as being at flood risk from rivers, the sea or surface water. Investment in flood risk management expertise and infrastructure is required to reduce this risk of flooding. As Jim Wells has pointed out, I was in Newcastle uh, on Tuesday the 25th uh, of August uh, with party colleagues and others, and I visited homes and I met with residents, and I could see for myself the extent of the flooding, the damage, the disruption, and the very understandable upset from people. My department continues to work with multi-agency partners in the recovery phase following the flooding. In relation to support for those impacted the, by the flooding, which a number of members have raised, the Department for Communities scheme of emergency financial assistance was activated. Under the scheme, which is administered through local councils, householders could potentially receive £1,000, and this financial assistance is to help make a home fit to live in as quickly as possible. I want to thank Ms Rogan for acknowledging the tireless work of roads and river staff uh, and for members acknowledging as well the efforts of those in our emergency services. I, I want to say that my department has developed very effective emergency planning arrangements and our analysis has shown, because we're always very willing to learn from experiences, but our analysis has shown that these systems did work well during the recent flooding. Following the weather warning issued by Met Office, my department's operational teams and multi-agency partners were in a heightened state of awareness from Monday the 24th of August and were ready to respond to the threat of flooding. My department also carried out its usual preparations, including placing staff on standby throughout the north um, to ensure that we were in a state of readiness and able to respond quickly. Subsequently, on the Tuesday morning, a multi-agency response in Newcastle was quickly established, with operational teams present from early morning. And I think it is important, uh, given the tireless efforts of staff in this incident, to say that staff were on site even before we received the first uh, flood call for assistance. They distributed some 4,000 sandbags with four pumps. They provided assistance to property owners. And it is believed that approximately 40 millimetres of rain fell in just under six hours, and that's roughly 50% of the monthly average. As a number of members have highlighted, that is unprecedented. I think it's very difficult for anyone to foresee the level of, fun of flooding that occurred in such a short space of time. Uh, the thousands of sandbags and pumping equipment required to respond to the flooding in Newcastle could not, and I understand why members and Ms Rogan and others have asked, but it could not have been redeployed well in advance of the flooding occurring. This is because the severe weather warning covered all of the north, and to pre-deploy to one area could significantly disadvantage another if the flooding did not occur as anticipated. Therefore, the approach of my department and our multi-agency partners to be, is to be in a state of readiness to deploy to any area that may be affected. And we believe that is uh, appropriate. Given the prolonged period of intense rainfall which fell in the Mourne Mountains in Newcastle area, the runoff, as Mr McGrath pointed out, was by all accounts successive. My department is mindful of the need to provide and maintain its infrastructure. However, unfortunately, it is not always possible to ensure that all flooding can be avoided, as during severe weather events, the volume of rainfall can exceed the design capacity of drainage infrastructure and, on occasion, flood defences. At this stage, a partial blockage to a bridge on the Bransford Road that occurred as a result of the high water levels in the Shimna River carrying debris down the watercourse is also thought to have been a contributory factor to the flooding. This debris was removed around 6 p.m. on Tuesday, the 25th of August, and it was removed after PSNI closed off the road because it was a significant operation. Once the flooding began to subside, many gullies were also blocked. 
However, this was due to floodwaters depositing debris on top of gully gratings, and this restricted the flow of water into the drainage system. The vast majority of gully, po uh, gully pots were not actually blocked prior to the flooding, and other than the surface gratings being covered, they were generally clear of obstruction. Ms Rogan is right to point out that this is not the first time that residents in Newcastle have had to endure this. In 2008, there was a flooding incident as well. Mr Wells asked, what, what am I going to do to try to make sure that this does not uh, reoccur? And I think we need to move to a long-term solution. Uh, that is why I have committed to delivering on the Shimna Flood Alleviation Scheme. The detailed design of the scheme commenced in September 2017 and is now complete. The scheme, which was due to start on site in the 2021 financial year, has encountered some slippage in the programme, uh, not least due to protracted land agreements. However, my department intends to use its powers of entry under the drainage order to proceed with the scheme and had commenced that process prior to the flooding occurring. The flood defences will be 1,400 metres in length and will require some £6.5 million of investment. The scheme will include a back drainage system that will allow surface water to drain to the river at suitable outlet points. Ms Rogan asks, why can't we have this scheme up and running now? Why can't we make it happen today? And I understand that, and I, I understand residents' uh, frustrations, uh, but we have to follow processes with detailed design, uh, with contractors uh, going out to procurement. Uh, and that work is ongoing. But when I was with the residents, I gave them my commitment and it was in front of, of officials that we would do everything that we could to expedite that scheme, to get delivery on it at the earliest opportunity. Of course. I think the question on everyone's lips and the question on everyone in Newcastle is, when will she as Minister come and cut the ribbon to announce that that scheme has been completed? Uh, thank the member um, for his question. Um, this, the scheme is due to commence uh, in the summer of next year. I've asked for that to be expedited, uh, and we expect that the works will take around 12 months to complete. So I will be very keen to be on site to cut that ribbon, uh, not for the photo op, but because this is a long-term solution for the residents in Newcastle to prevent this from happening again. A number of members have raised specific points, uh, and I will so turn uh, to them. Mr Wells, you raised the issue about the system of controls um, that people had shared with you. Um, that isn't the case. There are no systems of controls to divert flows. However, there is a water level alert system, and it was this that prompted and informed my department's swift action uh, and that of our multi-agency partners. Uh, you rightly asked around Flood Re. Uh, I can confirm that Flood Re does apply to Northern Ireland. It is a UK government scheme. And uh, you are right to say uh, about the exclusion of development after 2009. My understanding of that, and it is a UK government scheme, so we have not been involved in the design of it, is that uh, this decision was taken after more detailed information about risk, flood risk uh, has emerged, and so planning uh, has responded uh, and development has responded. Um, but I want to reassure you that planning policy in relation to flood risk here in Northern Ireland is very strong, and it supports my department's work in terms of prevention and managing um, flood, flood here. But I would encourage members to raise concerns about the scheme, uh, with the UK Government, and I will be very happy to support uh, those and to make representations uh, to that effect as well. Uh, Andrew Moore pointed out, uh, as did uh, Mr Beggs, about climate emergency and the reality of climate emergency coupled with the significant underinvestment in infrastructure over many, many years has presented us with the reality that, unfortunately, flooding incidents have occurred and homes and more homes will be affected by this. I think as a Minister for Infrastructure, I'm saying clearly this is a priority for me. And I hope it is a priority for us as an executive because we have a collective effort to make here in terms of policy uh, changes, in terms of our investment and in terms of our action. I also want to end um, on a note. I am giving my clear commitment to this project and to see this scheme delivered uh, so that residents in the area do not have to undergo this horrendous ordeal again. But I want to end on the point that was raised by both, both Mr McGrath and, and Mrs Bradley. It was a horrendous scene, uh, Ms Rogan, you're absolutely right. It was like something out of an action film, the levels of water. Um, but what was also very apparent was a strong sense of community spirit in Newcastle. People, even in that very distressing situation, were doing what they can, even when their own home was flooded, to be helping their vulnerable neighbours. 
Um, I so just advise the Minister that we've gone slightly over. I've given a wee bit of latitude because I oh, didn't take so much I, time. Yes, I thank, you, I thank you for your latitude. But just to end on that point, to say that it was, even in the distressing scenes, I took great heart from the strong sense of community spirit and pride in Newcastle. Okay, okay members. Um, that concludes the, the debate, and the Assembly itself is now adjourned. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you.